Hi, second grade. Today I am going to do the math lesson for day two of your packet, Tuesday, May 12th, 2020. Let's get started. We are going to start with unlock the problem. Make sure you have your packet with you so you can follow along. Turn to the day two unlock the problem. Let's read it together. A bookstore sold 27 books. Now they have 48. How many books were there to begin with? The first box on your paper says, what do we know? What is important? Take a minute to think what we know from this problem and what you think is important. I think one piece of important information is that the bookstore sold 27 books. I'm gonna write sold 27, I'll put a B for books. Another important piece of information is that they have 47 books, I'm sorry, 48 books. They have 48 books, that's important information. Let's keep going. The next box says, what are we trying to find? What is the question? What is the unit? I'm going to underline the question. How many books were there to begin with? We're trying to find how many books there were in the beginning. And the unit is books. The next box says, how will we use the information to solve the problem? This is where I want you to think about what equation you could use to help solve this problem. Are you going to use addition and put numbers together? Or are you going to use subtraction and take a part away? Pause the video and take a minute to think, then we'll go over it together. We want to know how many books there were in the beginning. We know that they sold 27 books and now they have 48. So I'm going to draw a number bond to help me think about if we're missing a part or a whole. So I know that they sold 27 books. They don't have 27 books altogether. So 27 is a part. That's the part they sold. Now they have 48. 48 is also not the whole. 48 is the part that they have left. Since we have the two parts, that means we're missing our whole. When we have two parts, we can put them together to find the whole. So the equation I am going to write is 27 plus 48. I'm writing it vertically. I'm going to make sure to carefully line up my tens and carefully line up my ones and my equal sign goes underneath, 27 plus 48. I decided to write it as a vertical equation because I can already tell that I'm going to have to make a new 10. So I wanted it to be easy to see. Pause the video and solve the problem. When you are done solving the problem, make sure you write your answer in a complete sentence. Remember in second grade, we always start our sentences with a capital letter and end with punctuation. Also make sure that you use the unit in your sentence. We're talking about books, so your answer needs to have the unit books in it. Now let's do some fluency. Today for fluency, we are going to be making the next 10 and making the next 100. Pause the video while you quickly think or write down the missing numbers, and then we'll go over it together. Let's go over the first one. 23 plus blank equals 30. How many more ones does 23 need to make 30? Three and seven are partners to 10. 58 plus blank equals 60. We wanna make a new 10, so we need to think about what eight's partner to 10 is. Eight and two are partners. I need two more ones. 75 plus blank equals 80. What's five's partner to 10? 
Five and five are partners. 11 plus blank equals 20. There's one one. How many more ones do we need to make a new 10? We need nine more ones. Great job. Now let's go over making the next 100. This is just like making the next 10, but instead of thinking about ones partner to tens, to 10, we are going to be thinking about how many tens we need to make the next 100. 280 plus blank equals 300. Here we have eight tens. How many more tens do we need to make the next 100? Eight and two are partners. So we need two more tens, which is the same as 20. 450 plus blank equals 500. We have five tens here, or 50. We need five more tens. Five tens is the same as 50. 450 plus 50 equals 500. 630 plus blank equals 700. 30 and 70 are partners. 810 plus blank equals 900. 10 and 90 are partners to make the next 100. Great job. Now we are going to do some shape review. We learned about this in the last packet. Take a minute to think and remind yourself what square angles are. Square angles are when the angle makes an L. Now take a minute to think about what parallel lines are. Parallel lines are when there are two straight lines that will never touch, even if they kept going on forever. We have three shapes here. Let's look at shape A. Does shape A have square angles? Square, uh, shape A has some square angles. This angle is square and this angle is square, but these angles are not square angles. Let's look at shape B. Does shape B have square angles? Shape B has all square angles. Let's look at shape C. Does shape C have square angles? None of shape C's angles are square. Oops, putting an X next to all of them because none of them are square. Now let's look at the shapes and figure out if they have parallel lines. Shape A, hmm. Is the top of shape A parallel to the bottom of shape A? No, it's not. These are not parallel lines. I can tell that the top is on an angle and if we kept drawing it out, it would eventually run into the bottom. So they are not parallel. Let's look at the sides. This side on the left of shape A, is parallel to this side on the right of shape A. So shape A has two parallel line, two parallel sides and two sides that are not parallel. Let's look at shape B. The top of shape B is parallel to the bottom of shape B. And the sides of shape B are parallel. We could have known that they would all be parallel because they also have square angles. Now let's look at shape C. The top of shape C is parallel to the bottom of shape C. And the sides of shape C, even though they're on an angle, they're on the same angle, so they're also parallel. Good job. Now we are going to get going with our addition review. In your packet, you have addition today. So we are going to practice some together before you do it on your own. Jocelyn's partner says she disagrees with her sum. What did Jocelyn do incorrectly? How could you explain to her what to do? Here I see the equation is 26 plus 147. I see that Jocelyn decided to solve this problem using a vertical equation. Pause the video and take a minute to think 
What did Jocelyn do incorrectly? What mistake did she make? Then we'll go over it together. I notice <clears throat> that Jocelyn wrote a vertical equation, but she didn't write it the right way. Can you tell what she did wrong? If you said that she didn't line up her units correctly, you're right, great job. When we write our numbers, we start with hundreds and then we write tens and then we write ones. She wrote 147 correctly, 100, four tens and seven ones, but the other number is 26. Does 26 have two hundreds and six tens? No, that would be 260. I'm going to write it next to it the way she should have lined it up. 147 plus 26. 26 has two tens and six ones. If you add it this way, you're going to get a different answer from when she, what she got. So remember, if you are solving these addition problems using a vertical equation, make sure that you line up your numbers correctly so you don't make a mistake like Jocelyn did. Now we are going to practice some problems together. I chose some problems that you have in your packet. So we can do them together here and then you'll get to practice it on your own in your packet. Help me read the equation, 417, plus 293 equals blank. We can use two different strategies to solve this problem. One strategy is a vertical equation and the other is a place value chart. Remember, your teachers do not care which strategy you choose. Whichever one works best for your brain is fine by us. Just make sure that you do your best work. I'm going to start by lining up my numbers for a vertical equation. 417 plus 293. I carefully lined up hundreds, tens, and one, so I wouldn't make a mistake like Jocelyn did. Remember in the vertical equation, the equal sign is a line underneath. Now I'm also going to model the problem using a place value chart. Hundreds, tens, and ones. In my place value chart, instead of writing the numbers, I'm going to draw a model, 417 has four hundreds, one, two, three, four. Has one ten and seven ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm drawing my ones like they're in a tense frame to make it easy for me to see. And 293, I need two hundreds, I need nine tens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three. One, two, three ones. Let's start with the vertical equation. Should I start by adding my hundreds, tens, or ones? If you said ones, you're right. Seven ones plus three ones is 10 ones. Can I put 10 in my ones place? No, I need to move it to the tens place. So I'm gonna put a new 10 in my tens place. Remember, you can put your 10 up top or you can put it down in the line below to make your new group. So I have zero ones and one 10. One and zero make 10. Now let's go to my tens. One plus nine is 10. 10 plus one is 11. I have 11 tens. 11 can't go in my tens place, so I need to move it to the hundreds place. I have one 10 and one new hundred. One and one make 11. Now let's add my hundreds. Four 
plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. I got the answer 710. Let's see if I get the same answer in my place value chart. Should I start with my hundreds, my tens, or my ones? If you said ones, you're right. Let's count my ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What do I do with 10 ones? I group them up, I bundle them up, and I move them to the tens place. 10 ones makes a new 10. That means I have zero ones left. Now that we did the ones, let's count our tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Anytime I have ten, I need to make a new group. So I'm going to circle my ten tens and I'm going to move them to the hundreds place because I know that ten tens makes a new hundred. Then I only have one ten left. Now let's count my hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 710, we got the same answer. Way to go. We are going to practice one more problem together. Let's read this equation. 338 plus 273 equals blank. We are going to practice using the vertical equation and a place value chart again. I'm going to start by filling in my units, hundreds, H for hundred, tens, T for tens, and O, O for ones. 338, 300, three tens, eight ones, plus 273, two hundreds, seven tens, three ones. I'll put my addition sign, plus sign, and the equal sign below. Now let's model the problem using a place value chart. Hundreds, tens, and ones. 338 has three hundreds. One, two, three. 338 has three tens, one, two, three, and eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's model 273. 200, 70, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and three ones. We start by adding our hundreds, tens, or ones first. If you said ones, you're right. We always start adding our ones first. Eight plus three. Eight plus three is 11. I know that eight plus two would make 10, and one more is 11. Can 11 ones go in the one place? No, they can't. We need to make a new 10. So we have one one, and one new 10. The one and the one make 11. Now let's add our tens. Three plus seven is 10, plus one more is 11 again. So I need to make a new group another time. I'm gonna make a new 100 and I have one 10. One and one make 11 again. Three hundreds plus two hundreds is five hundreds, plus one more hundred is six hundreds. Our answer is 611. Let's see if we get the same answer using a place value chart. Are we gonna start with our hundreds, tens, or ones? We're gonna start with our ones, just like always. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Stop. Anytime we get 10, we make a new group. So I'm circling 10 ones and I'm gonna move them to the tens place. Then I only have one one left, so I'm gonna make a one. Now let's count our tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. 
Whenever we get 10, we make a new group. 10 tens makes 100. So I'm bundling up these 10 tens and I'm going to move them to the hundreds place. Now I only have one 10 left. Now finally, let's count our hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six hundreds. We got the same answer. Great job. Now you can go ahead and do the rest of the problems in your packet. Remember to use the strategy that works best for you, a vertical equation or a place value chart. If you want, you can do both like I did to check your work. Make sure that you send pictures of your work to your teacher.